Hello, nerds and nerdettes. Welcome back to the channel where we have yet another review slash overview on a recently released Marvel Omnibus, which of course is none other than the Fantastic Four by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch Omnibus finally released and in hand. Before we get into any details at all, I do want to remind you guys that if you're looking for this book or any of the other books that I've reviewed, to head on over to the channel sponsor, organicpricebooks.com. Use that discount code stay nerdy for $2 off your order and also to help out the channel. But without further ado, let's get into the book itself. This book does have a cover price of $100 and a page count of 784 pages. This is a absolutely beautiful book aesthetically, especially when it comes to the art. It has two of my favorite creators on it, so let's jump into it. All right, now here we are. The Fantastic Four by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch Omnibus. This is the standard edition cover. The DM variant will put up here. I thought this was the more fitting cover since this actually is by Brian Hitch and he's credited on the book. Taking a quick look at the spine, we do have a very beautiful spine. I think the look of this book aesthetically is absolutely magnificent. This is a very well-known picture of the Fantastic Four drawn by Brian Hitch. I think if you Google Fantastic Four, this will probably be one of the first images that are going to pop up. But without further ado, let's get under this dust jacket and take a look at the board. And here we are under the board, taking a quick look at the inner flaps. We do have Miller and Hitch are the Titanic 2. That is definitely a good way to describe them. Maybe not on this book, but we can get into that. Um, a little bit about the creators, obviously Mark Miller. And then you also have a little bit about Tommy Lee Edwards. Um, kind of your standard Marvel flaps. I just like to show them off because I know some people do like to look at them, but let's look at this wraparound cover. Taking a quick look at the wraparound cover, it is absolutely beautiful. Of course, artwork by Brian Hitch there. So what would you expect? It is magnificent. I love wraparound covers, as you guys know. But let's look at the binding. And here's the binding. This is not a very large book, um, so not much of an eye. It does suck a little bit because Brian Hitch loves splash pages, but it's not horrible. I feel like most modern day omnibuses these days are getting a very similar spine. I meant binding there. I know I say spine all the time. I have no clue why, but um, diving into the book, we do have some fantastic for blue very good choice for these end pages and then we do have a title page and then after that we have the table of contents fairly standard for marvel books um, as you can tell it does collect a decent amount of issues here majority of it written by mark miller at some point mark miller does get a scripter so he does get a little bit of help pertaining to writing and scripting um, you also have some writing done by Joe Ahern. I never know how to pronounce that. Um, but yeah, so, and then we actually get into the first issue of the Omnibus, which is Fantastic Four, 554. Um, so the gist of the Omnibus, at least in the beginning, is Reed Richards is approached um, to essentially establish a new Earth. Here's some of that beautiful Brian Hitch artwork. Um, to pretty much help establish a new Earth because Earth is dying or it's eventually going to die. And that's really kind of where the first initial issues pick up. This is not a run similar to Hickman where there are a lot of overarching um, or th there's a overarching story that goes issue from issue um, in some form or fashion. This is definitely a little bit more of an episodic title. Um, the stories and the, the focus per on the character that the story is about definitely varies from story to story. Here's another splash page um, for Brian Hitch's art. Like I said, the dude just loves splash pages. Um, but yeah, so the focus on one of the characters or one of the cast of the Fantastic Four does vary depending on the story. It is not an overarching story from issue to issue, similar to the Hickman run or the Fantastic Four run where things are loosely connected. Um, 
it's definitely much more episodic in nature and it's reading fluidity. I've been saying that a lot lately, but, um, one thing that this book definitely does secede at is Brian Hitch's art. As one would expect, this is definitely a art forward book. It is absolutely beautiful. Some panels in this omnibus, I actually liked even more than some panels in the ultimates in the authority. Um, it's some of Brian Hitch's best work. And I, I struggle to say that because I truly love Brian Hitch's work, but he absolutely kills it in this omnibus. Um, main reason I kind of picked up this omnibus is because Mark Miller and Brian Hitch are two of my favorite creators. I love when they work together. I love when they work separately. That's the main reason I picked it up. Um, a lot of people in the community are picking this up just to bridge the gap between the Wade and Waringo and Hickman runs on the Fantastic Four. But honestly, other than that, it's not a whammy of a story. It is not a extremely impactful story pertaining to a lot of aspects. You do get a lot of focus on the characters of Thing um, and Johnny Storm. You kind of have a lot of romantic um, scenarios and storylines kind of explored between those two characters, especially pertaining to Ben Grimm or the Thing. Um, but you also get a fairly decent focus on Doctor Doom as well, which is probably one of the highlights of this book. You do get a lot of scenes involving Doom, a lot of scenes involving how Doom just Doctor Doom just kind of works and thinks in general, which is a very interesting story and avenue to kind of explore. And that is definitely a highlight of this book, other than just the art. Um, that is not saying that there is no um, Sue Storm or Sue Richards or Reed Richards in this book because obviously they are still part of the Fantastic Four. I just really truly felt like during my reading experience that the focus was much more on the thing and Doctor Doom primarily um, through a decent amount of the stories and then Johnny Storm probably second secondary. Um, but honestly, I feel like that's kind of par for the course for a lot of Fantastic Four books. Thing is most people's favorite Fantastic Four character and those that typically don't like Thing like Human Torch. So it does make a little bit of sense there. Um, you do have the, I believe, mini series at the end of the book, uh, 1987. And honestly, that is probably the biggest highlight of the book. Um, I really, really enjoy that story. I don't know if it's just relatable or what, but um, here it is here. If I can find the cover for you guys, because I actually love the cover. Um, here we are. 85, 1985, not 87. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, you absolutely, I don't know if it's, that I read this when I was younger or what, but I absolutely relate to the story. Um, I could probably say that a lot of members of the community will probably relate to that story. And that was the biggest highlight of the book for me, story-wise at least. But overall, the art is definitely the most highlightiest part of the book. Um, I feel like I've said highlighted or highlight a million times now. Um, just because Brian Hitch absolutely kills it. He does have that um, cinematic style of paneling and artwork, and you get that in here, um, which is fairly par for the course for Brian Hitch, like I said. But um, definitely a strong book art-wise. Story-wise, I don't think this is going to be rivaling the Wade run or the Hickman run. Honestly, it's a little forgettable, if I'm being honest. Um other than the art, but the story overall, there was nothing that um, struck home or um, really was something worth remembering, at least in my opinion. But um, definitely still a decent read, especially if you're a Brian Hitch fan or a Mark Miller fan um, like me, which was really why this was a no brainer to actually pick up. But um, unless you're a Fantastic Four diehard or a Fantastic Four fan, I don't think this is required reading. Um, I would say it's somewhat new friend to read or new 
reader friendly. That was a jumbled mess um, just because it kind of picks up in a new era of Fantastic Four. But um, I don't think it's required reading necessarily. So this might be one that new readers may want to pass on. But as far as extras go, we do have some awesome extras, variants, sketches, um, paneling, talking a little bit about the cast that features in the book. We'll kind of stay away from that stuff for spoiler reasons, but that does wrap up the book. So we will head back to the table. And welcome back. So as I kind of went into, this is not necessarily the most acclaimed Fantastic Four run, but aesthetically, art-wise, it is absolutely beautiful. You do have the writing of Mark Miller taking place and the art of Brian Hitch, if the title of the omnibus doesn't already give that away. So you do have the same creative team that is on the Ultimates, and it definitely has that similar vibe and feel to kind of its storytelling, its paneling, its art layout, just its overall look in general. It definitely feels like it's the script or the storyboarding of a movie that's meant to be made. It does have a very cinematic feel throughout the reading experience or cinemagraphic, which is what I apparently love to say in my reviews, but it does have a very cinematic feel to the reading experience overall. Would I say this is the best Fantastic Four run or a must buy for my Fantastic Four fans? Honestly, no. I would not say that it's a book that you should go out and seek or when it's out of print should buy for astro astronomical numbers. Honestly, as far as the impact, it felt very familiar or similar to the Matt Fraction run on Fantastic Four, which is kind of the calm after a big storm. Obviously, this being the major run after the Wade and Ruringo omnibus. So you had a lot of major massive events taking place during that run. And this is kind of the calm before we jump into the storm that is the Hickman run on Fantastic Four. And then you have that calm afterwards, which is the fraction. Um, but um, overall, it is fun to read. I think if you're a Fantastic Four fan, you're probably going to get some enjoyment out of this book. It's not a Hickman run, it's not a Wade run, but it is still a Fantastic Four story. You do get a lot of focus on Doctor Doom, on The Thing, Johnny Storm. So it, it does have a lot of those kind of familiar tropes that do take place in other Fantastic Four runs. So if you are a fan of the team, Marvel's first family, you're probably gonna like the book overall. Um, but I don't think it's a necessary read unless you really, really want to bridge that gap between the Wade Omnibus and into the Hickman Omnibuses. But overall, I am going to give it a 6 out of 10, really primarily breaking out of that 5 because I would have given it a 5 out of 10, but Brian Hitch's artwork throughout the Omnibus is absolutely beautiful, and that's honestly the only reason it's not a 5 and worked its way to a 6. But that does wrap up today's review. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below, as always. I'm very curious you guys' thoughts on this Omnibus. I know this is one that a lot of people kind of wanted, but I never thought it was the strongest run on the title, so it was a little bit confusing at times why people wanted it so much. But I guess as far as completionist go or completionist mindset, you probably do nine times out of ten have people that just want to bridge that gap between Wade and Hickman. But I don't think it's the strongest run. It is a blast still to read because it's a superhero comic book. I'm very rarely probably going to give a superhero comic book anything below a five because I'm a superhero comic reader in general. That's where I got my start. That's what I enjoy. But I would love to hear from you guys and how you felt about the story overall or if it's something you even picked up. But other than that, quick reminder that if you're not a part of the Illuminati, hit that subscribe button and join the community today. Also, if you could, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up icon. It helps us in the algorithm and we are currently trying to reach our next milestone of a thousand subscribers. 
And also, one last thing, if you did enjoy today's review or any of my other reviews or videos, then do yourself a favor and hit that bell icon. That way you can get notified anytime I put out content. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and tuning in every week. I truly appreciate that. And of course, as always, stay nerdy.